Have you ever felt your soloing over major chords sounds just too predictable? Almost like it's the very first time you've ever improvised? Well, by incorporating today's technique into your solos, you can transform your playing and finally get that hip, modern sound you've been after, even on the most basic of chords and progressions. Without this technique, your solos may very well continue to sound amateurish, leading to more disappointment in your playing and leaving your fellow musicians unimpressed. So if you want to throw some stank on your major chords during your next solo, let's dive in. We're going to start with a short etude I wrote featuring today's technique. I'll play it first and then walk you through exactly how you can apply the same technique in your own playing. As you're listening, see if you can spot what I'm doing here to get that modern sound over such a simple progression made up of just a few basic chords. Here we go. By the way, if you want to follow along at home, you can download the sheet music and backing track for free at the link in the description below. Also, this time around, I've also included guitar tabs as well as transposed parts for bass clef, E flat and B flat instruments. All right, so what's the secret sauce to making your solos on major chords sound more mature and less predictable? Well, you want to start by looking beyond the obvious notes. If you confine yourself to standard chord tones like the root, third and fifth, you're going to sound boring and predictable. Instead, experiment with upper structure triads like those built on the fifth scale degree of the original chord. I know the term upper structure triad can sound complex and scary, but it's a game changer for evolving from bland noodling to intricate soloing. Take a look at measure 10 in the A2. The chord at hand is G major, but I'm outlining a D major chord instead. D major is an upper structure triad built on the fifth note of the G major scale and it yields the five, seven, and nine of G major. That's right, I'm holding two chords in mind at the same time, five, nine, seven, five in G, and one, five, three, one in D. I know this kind of stuff can make your head hurt at first, but once you get to know your chords well enough, it'll be like watching Star Wars and knowing that the guy flying the Millennium Falcon is Han Solo and Harrison Ford. Two names, same guy, no big deal. Now, having explored the foundational step of implying upper structure triads, let's delve into how to practically incorporate them into your playing. The challenge lies in improvising with these implied chords in a way that is musical. The last thing you want is to spend all this time wrapping your head around two chords at once and end up sounding like you're playing arpeggios from an exercise book. So to make the most of these triads, we're gonna focus on three essential tips that will make your solos way more hip. The first tip is to become fluent in all inversions of the upper structure triad you're implying. The keyword is fluent, not familiar, fluent. Be able to arpeggiate both up and down in root position where the root is in the lowest voice, first inversion where the third is in the lowest voice, and second inversion where the fifth is in the lowest voice. Take a look at measure 13. I'm implying a D major triad over a G major triad by arpeggiating down in second inversion. Beginners are most likely to arpeggiate up root position, so if you want to sound more advanced, don't do that. The second tip is to explore broken chord shapes. Instead of simply arpeggiating up and down, you can jump around from chord tone to chord tone. Check out measure 10 again, where I imply a D major triad. I jump from the D up to the A, skipping over the F sharp. Then I jump from the F sharp to the D, skipping over the A. With broken chords, as well as standard arpeggios and all inversions at your disposal, you've got a ton of options to play with but there's one more thing you can do to get even more creative. Which brings us to tip number three, incorporating the two and the four. To be clear, the two of the upper structure triad is the six of the original chord, and the four of the upper structure triad is the root of the original chord. I used to think that implying triads like this meant sticking to the one, three, and five, but then I checked out McCoy Tyner's solo on Passion Dance. 
Here she's implying E flat major over F, and he's doing so with what looks more like a scale than an arpeggio. Eric Johnson uses the same technique in his solo on Cliffs of Dover, which was actually the inspiration for the etude I wrote. Check out this lick he plays on G major by implying D major. Now that we've covered how to get creative with these triads, it's crucial to remember that the ultimate goal is musicality. A lot of musicians tend to learn a new technique like this and end up making a mess of their solos. It's one thing to learn a backflip, it's another to execute it smoothly in the context of a performance. So let's now focus on how to incorporate upper structure triads creatively and ensure your solos remain melodically compelling. This is achieved not just through technical skill, but how you develop your musical ideas through repetition and variation. I hear a lot of aspiring improvisers ask, won't repetition make my solos boring? On the contrary, repetition when used creatively alongside variation establishes themes that your audience will latch onto consciously or even subconsciously. Now I go deep on repetition and variation in my course, The Soloing System, but let's dig into a few examples from this etude so you can hear and see it in action. So right at the start, we've got three Ds followed by three As followed by three Ds. They're, they're all groups of three and they all start on the upbeat. And, and by the way, the, the D and A combination there is a subtle nod to the D major over G major sound. Now in measure three, the three Ds come back followed by only one A, which then kicks off the variation through measure four. Check out this line in measure five and six. We've got an A, D, E, F sharp, A, F sharp, E, and D. It's a D major triad and second inversion with that E in there for some extra D major -y goodness over that G major chord. But what I want you to pay special attention to is what happens in measure seven. The chord is C major, but we've got a G, B, G, D, and C. That's an implied G major chord resolving to the root of the original C chord. But it's also a callback to what we just heard in the previous measure. Same exact rhythm, same general shape. That is how you use an advanced technique like implying upper structure triads while still playing melodically via repetition and variation. Now your homework is to go through the rest of the solo and find other instances I use this technique. Note what kind of arpeggios I'm playing and how I'm incorporating repetition and variation to keep things musical and melodically compelling. Remember, you can download the sheet music and backing track for free at the link below. And if you're liking this chord tone approach to soloing, it's essential that you can do it on seventh chords, not just triads. So check out this deep dive here where I'll show you my chord tone only system and how you can use it to make your next solo your best solo. <laughs> 